Hello and welcome to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller and today's tutorial is an answer to a forum question here at Geek at Play by Manny. He wanted to know how he could make a stump like one that is sold in the marketplace at Cornucopia. And I went to Cornucopia and was unable to find the one he was referring to. I know which one it is, but it doesn't appear to be uh, for sale any longer. So I happened to be in luck because I bought it not too long ago, several months ago. And uh, I loaded it up here into view. And um, whenever there are some modeling projects that I'm not quite sure of. I like to load the program either into view or into poser, switch to a wireframe mode, and examine the construction of it. See how the the original person made it because uh, if you can start off with uh, with that as a uh, as a beginning it certainly helps give you understanding on uh, what to do as soon as you hop into hexagon. And <clears throat> Manny wanted to know how you can make it in hexagon, so we're going to start off by looking at it here in view. I'll do a quick render of it, and it's a fabulous looking uh, item. Uh, it had mushrooms that uh, were attached to it, and it also had um, ivy that was growing up on it. I deleted those items so that we could just focus in on the stump and see what we've got. And to look at it, it's it's pretty basic. It just has a, uh, a very basic shape to it. And I'll get rid of the stump for now. And then he's got two planes that he's used for the end grain. I'll move that out of the way. And he's got an, a little section called end bark, which is probably a little ring that goes around the in green that shows you the bark. So it's, uh, it's a pretty basic model and it shouldn't give us uh, too much problem when we uh, get started here in Hexagon. So I'm going to go ahead and close out view and close that out. Let's uh, hop into view and get started. Now what makes that model look so good is not necessarily the modeling. The modeling is very basic. But Tom Mitchell, the author of that particular model, uh, did a fantastic job at creating the textures. So this will probably be a two-part tutorial. Uh, the first one here in Hexagon, we will create the model. And then uh, the second tutorial will be on uh, putting a texture to it, whether we do it here using the UV tools here in Hexagon or just do it all in view. I'm not sure exactly where I will end up, but we will uh, accomplish this this task uh, without fail. So coming up here to my 3D Primitives tab, I'm going to select a cylinder, and 8 points is fine. I'm going to go ahead and validate that. I'm not going to put caps on the end. I'll do that later, uh, only because I'm going to now apply one level of smoothing to it. Now I'm going to click on my lightning bolt, get rid of that smoothing. And this is our stump that we're starting with. So let me come up here to select edges, select the bottom edge. I'm going to loop that. I'm going to come down here to soft selection. And I'm going to enable my soft selection. All I want to do is just broaden the base of it a little bit. And now I will reduce my soft selection, broaden it a little bit more. OK. Now with my edges selected and my soft edges enabled, I'm just going to select some edges. I'm just going to pull them out like about like that. And you know, there's probably uh, a thousand and one different ways to go about creating a model such as this. Uh, this is just the, uh, the, the one I'm going to use today. And now I switched from world view to, to a selection, or not view, but axis mode. Uh, here at the axis mode, see I want to um, rotate this selection of edges. I want to rotate it this 
direction. And with my current axis uh, in world mode, you see I don't, uh, I'm not able to rotate it. But if I come up here to selection, now the axis is oriented to the selection of edges that I just made. So now I can rotate this like I want. Come back here to world view and select some more edges. I'll select a few down there. And I will pull this out. Rotate that. Because it's not in world view, it kind of got a little skewed, but well, this is not rocket science here. Uh, in fact, probably the more gnarled it looks, the, uh, the better of a model we will have. Something more convincing. Pull that out a little bit. Let's swing around to this side. Now, if you remember looking at his model in view, he only had four corners that were really pulled out. And let's do these. We'll do both of these. Oops. Rotate that. Okay. Now I'm going to come up here and just, uh, rather than select edges, I'm just going to select some bump, some uh, some points, and just add some a little lumpiness to it, just some irregularity. Look like a uh, an old tree. I may want to increase my uh, softness a little bit, and let's pull this out. I think I'll select that edge there and pull that out. And I'm going to pause it here. And all I'm going to be doing is just uh, adding a, a distorted shape to it. And we'll be right back. OK, so here we are. I've uh, All I've done is just add a little more of a lumpy uh, effect to it. And uh, if we click off of it and look at it without the uh, wireframe enabled, you see we've got a nice uh, lumpy looking stump. So let's clean up our edges here. I'm going to turn off soft selection. I'm going to loop the bottom here because it got a little twisted on me. And with my Y axis tool, because I use the universal manipulator, and I'm just going to straighten out the, uh, the bottom of our stump there. And that looks good and straight. Okay, now we need to come up here to uh, do some work on the top. Now I will come up here to vertex modeling. I'm going to hit close. I'm just I'm just going to close the top of it by clicking inside, and that's good. I don't need to close the bottom. And come up here to select faces, select that top face. Come up here to sweep surface, and what I want to do is create an inner radius um, because, and I'll show you right here. This edge here, the thickness of it will be the bark texture, and this red selected circle in here will be our end grain texture. So that's why I wanted to um, create a little radius. So I'll select the inside, sweep surface, and I'm just going to extrude down a little bit about to there and that's good now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that circled face again and I'm going to delete it uh, come up here to select faces select one of those faces now I'm just going to add a little irregularity to it and probably turn down my softness a little bit more Let's see what this gives us. There we are. Just a little irregularity. I'll select that end right there. Pull that. That looks okay. Now the higher the resolution of your model, the uh, actually the better you'll be able to get this to look because you'll have more points to um, to pull up on. But uh, this is a tutorial just showing you how to uh, 
construct the thing basically and you can do it from there uh, however you like. But this will certainly give you the, uh, the tools to work with. Okay, now I'm going to come up here, select edges. Now I'm going to select that edge, loop it, come up here to lines, and click curve extraction. And all that did is give me a curve. Now this is the reason why I deleted the round circular face in the beginning. That particular face had um, no lines uh, that intersected it. It was all just one line around the perimeter. So I knew that when I started pulling up on the edge like this, it would cause the object to create this irregular shape. Well, if you've done any modeling and if you don't have those lines intersecting and you start creating irregular shapes like this, I'm not talking about uh, irregular shapes. Oh, let me select it. I'm not talking, let me select it. I'm not talking about creating irregular shapes like in that direction. I'm talking about you see this is not flat it comes up here and then it kind of dips down there and then it comes back up here it's it's kind of like a an eight that's been squashed and you're gonna run if if we decide to use some UVing uh, applications to this you may run into some problems um, with bad geometry so that's why I chose to delete it and now I'm gonna make a new one and come up here to surface modeling, click on Coon surface, and there we go. There is our um, tree ring, essentially. That's the cap. And by creating it like I did, it adds the appropriate lines of geometry in here for me. So we won't run into uh, problems later on. So there we've got our old tree. Now you certainly. Um, if you don't want to have this, the the um, this flat part of the tree the, where the tree rings are, if you don't want them recessed, but instead want the thing to be flush across the top, then just loop that and come up here to lines, curve extraction. and create a solid surface out of that. And maybe if you want, you can drop, drop it down just a little bit. However you like. Uh, you've got more than one way that I showed you on, on, um, on, on how to create it. And uh, now I, 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 I realize the, uh, the person who wrote this request into the forums wanted to create a tree log. I instead created a trunk because a tree log, well, we've just created one end of a tree log, and and uh, all you got to do is create the other end of the tree log, but I decided to uh, create the tutorial this way to show you how to create a stump. And with the uh, techniques that we used here, you can create a tree log very easy. In fact, a lot easier than creating a stump because you don't have to deform the... Uh, uh, the base of it like I did. So there you go. That's creating a tree stump here into Hexagon, and we will create another tutorial on texturing it. So thanks for watching here at Geek of Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.